Good morning. It's time to wake up, y'all. You're listening to the Armchair Quarterback Show. We're here weekdays on CBS Radio, YouTube Live, 8 a.m. Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific. The Armchair Quarterback Show, your first choice for Southern sports talk. Good morning, Mr. Joey Areola. Good morning, Mr. Mack. I don't know much, but I know one thing. I am so tired of Aaron Rodgers. Just tell me when he's going to another team or tell me if he's staying with Green Bay. I don't need these daily updates in Chicago. I don't even hear about Justin Fields. Hi, I'm Mac McGann. I don't know much, but I know one thing. The Islanders and the Lightning are headed to the championship finals, the conference championship finals. It means I can't lose and I can't win. You're listening to the Armchair Quarterbacks. Do you believe in God? Yes. Oh, so you're pretty religious. That's right. So is it a problem that I'm not really religious? Not for me. Why not? I'm not the one going to hell. Well, I'm going to hell. That seems about right. According to Putty. Hey, have you heard the one about the guy in hell with the coffee and the donuts? I'm not in the mood. I'll have some coffee and a donut. You don't care. You don't believe in hell. I know, but he does. So it's more of a relationship problem than the final destination of your soul. Well, relationships are very important to me. Hmm. Maybe you can strike one up with the Prince of Darkness as you burn for all eternity. Armchair. Community Access Channel. He's the armchair quarterback. He's full of beer and he's full of snacks. He's the all-American man. Hey, howdy, hi, top of the morning to you. Welcome to the Armchair Quarterback Radio Show. Mac McGee sitting alongside Joey Areola. Joey, how the hell are you, my friend? Oh, it's a beautiful Thursday. Got off tomorrow, so can't complain. I'm ready to talk. We got a loaded sports schedule. I know you want to dive into, you know, Florida State. I was paying attention a little bit there, and but we got a lot of playoffs as well, so a good day to talk sports. Yeah, before we get into all that, uh, we wanted to lead the show off with batting practice is uh, the most hated players in the country in the NBA. And you and you see see the screen up there uh, where it's got it divided around showing by by state and what they did. Is, th- this is via Twitter. I, I don't know how they exactly how they came up with the algorithm, but essentially people complaining about certain players on Twitter in each state they have it coded so the very darkest of of the uh, states colored in that's for Kyrie Irving purple's LeBron the grayed out is for James Harden Kevin Durant uh it looks like Kevin Durant is is sharing the same color scheme as Kyrie so whoever came with this wasn't very uh on top of it and then the red is Westbrook it looks like uh, Durant is only hated in Ohio. I don't get the relation to that, but you see the majority of it, especially in middle America, uh, the working class, the blue collar, they hate LeBron James. That's pretty much it. Um, I'd say the reason why Durant's hated in California is because he left Golden State, right? Um, I don't get the George thing in Arizona. Do you? Any idea? It's a, any idea why uh, uh, George is being hated on in uh, in Arizona? I I don't get the relation because he played in Oklahoma. No, because he played in Indiana, and he now plays in California. But for some reason, they hate him in in Arizona. I haven't. Was he a part of the voting process or something? Was he the one stuff in the ballot? <laughs> <laughs> why do they hate him? I don't get that one. But anyway, uh, the Kyrie one, I get why he's hated in the Northeast. Uh, Florida, I would have guessed, to be honest, living down here, I would have guessed it would have been LeBron. But maybe there are a lot of Celtics fans that just absolutely hate how how goofy he is. Um, but the LeBron thing, this tells you something right there. So now here's the question, okay? You got LeBron as the most hated player in the NBA. He's not in the playoffs. Is that going to help the ratings or is it going to hurt him? Because people like to see 
him suffer and they want to see him lose. And that now that he is no longer in the playoffs, will they rally around and have some other villain like Harden and Kyrie, et cetera, or will they be more likely to, because here's the funny thing. When you look at um, New Jersey, which is right next to New York, New York, obviously, I can't tell if that's been colored in for Durant or Kyrie. I'm I'm going to assume it's Kyrie. Cause I can't imagine you hate Kevin Durant for a whole lot. What say you? Are you awake over there? Drink some damn coffee. Oh yeah. No. <laughs> Sometimes I think I got a little bit of a Wi-Fi issue. Actually, my apologies, but um, I, I think LeBron. As much as I dislike him, I think and it was, it was good to have him in the playoffs. I've actually been paying a little more attention to the East now that he was out. I'll, um, the West games are exciting, but they're always late up at night to see if he's going to win or lose because obviously he's always involved uh, deep into the playoffs. And to not have them, and to not have a big villain, I, Brooklyn Nets are now my villain, but they're just crushing things. So my Milwaukee bets are looking terrible. But uh, in terms of LeBron James, I as much as I say this, I think it's better when he's in it to have an absolute villain or, or you love him. There's really no middle ground. I, I wonder about this because me personally, if he were still in the playoffs, I wouldn't be watching him because I, 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 I detest him that much. He's just, he's just a, he's just a, um, <laughs> I'll, I'll take their word. He's a deplorable. <laughs> he's just a terrible person uh, on and off the court. And you know, look, as a teammate, he's, he, people probably love him. I've never heard teammates complain about him, but as far as as a person, he's an, he's an egomaniac. He uh, go, he says really dumb things in the world of politics, gets his ass handed to him, then he has to go back and – well, he, he rarely apologizes. He just backtracks and tries to fade in, into the – it's almost like the Homer Simpson gif where he fades back into the bushes, uh, you, you know, trying to hide of what he had just said. Um, the, the thing about it is well, – That's why I think the, the blue-collar workers probably don't like him either. Right, so – and I think one of the things that he's most hated for outside of his terrible political takes where he's always wrong and then has to apologize. I think more of it is the fact that he's bounced around so much. So there's, doesn't it feel like he's got loyalty. He, I believe people were back on the LeBron James wagon when he left Miami to go back home to Cleveland to win a championship. And I personally started pulling for him. Now this is before he did all his political junk. He, you know, he doesn't do, he, he wasn't doing that back in 2012, 13, 14, et cetera. He just started that in the past calendar year or so. Pretty much every, every as soon as he started bootlicking China and everyone called him out for it, then he tried to virtual, yep. we, you know, he tried to go the virtual signal route. But I think he's more hated because he has left his home city in the dust twice. And I think that's, that's got to be a, that's why I find it hard that Durant is the most, Hated player in Ohio. Why the hell wouldn't it be LeBron? Right? Like, cause he's left you twice, twice. And, and, and I get, go ahead. I get that. He's brought a team, a championship and all that. The, uh, cause he did go back after the first time, but you left again. And I know you could argue, well, he might've thought he got his job. I'm done with getting the championship, but how are you going to hate Durant more? Maybe because he beat Cleveland once in the finals, but come on now, LeBron is, is done you dirty except one year when he won it all. all right tell tell your roommates to uh not download porn between 8 30 eastern and 9 30 eastern on thursdays because your bandwidth drags is dragging right now so tell them to knock off dra- downloading the porn until after I'm the gonna try some. <laughs> anyways um yeah I, commerc- I find it interesting because i've got a lot of friends who have abandoned the nba right and a lot of it has to do with LeBron. So I'm, I'm curious to see if they get re-energized and watch it now, or have they just totally lost interest? I'm for one, it have been dialed in. I enjoy watching uh, the Suns. I'm become a huge Chris Paul and Suns fan. I want to see them, them do well. Not that I'm against the jazz. So it looks like that I'd be shocked if, the, if it's not the jazz and the Suns in the uh, conference finals, but there's something about Chris Paul constantly getting pushed off to the side, constantly getting blamed. And then everywhere he goes, he wins. There's something about that. 
that, that, that speaks to me. I like Donovan Mitchell. If, if he ends up in the finals, I'm going to watch it. Uh, you still have a villain, in my opinion. You've got the Nets. I don't want to see Kyrie Irving when he's a dope. I don't have anything against Durant. I don't really have anything against Harden, realistically. But then again, I'm not a Rockets fan who got burned by him, right? Um, I'm a little surprised of the states. Is is I'm not, I'm not surprised of the list. I'm surprised of the states in this. But anyways, we'll move on. Uh, the Women's College World Series Game 3 is today. Oklahoma won last night. Florida State had the lead going to the fifth. And then I believe uh, pitcher Sandercock just ran out of gas. And once again, and maybe there's a method to our madness, but the manager kept the pitchers in too long. And by the time she pulled her out, the game was essentially over. So maybe she's looking at big picture of, I have this game to play with. I don't want to wear out my entire staff trying to chase down a W. Let's go ahead and see what we can do today. So today it's a strange start time for people who actually want to watch this. Uh, I know I've been locked into it, but I know that I'm in the minority. I know not a lot of people are not locked into women's college softball, but it is extremely exciting. The, today's game is going to be at three o'clock Eastern on ESPN. And I think it's because ESPN probably has uh, the NBA on, on their network tonight is, is what I'm guessing. And they don't want, uh, they don't want the two com competing with each other. I'm going to double check that real quick, but I'm pretty sure that that's the reason why. Um, but anyways, uh, have you watched any of it or is it just kind of like, whatever, dude, these aren't my teams. I don't really give a crap. <laughs> I, I checked in a little last night, but you're correct on the ESPN games. Um, both of them are on ESPN tonight, Brooklyn and Milwaukee and the Clippers and the Jazz. Yeah. Um, I, I tried, like you said, I've been following a little bit with Florida State. Um, because I know, you know, you're a big fan and I want to see what's going on, but I just saw the six to two score this morning. It's like, damn, I was hoping for a Florida state W. Yeah. Like I said, they were up two to one and going to the fifth. And so, and so today I'm yeah, pretty okay. sure Oklahoma is going to be the home team because they're the prohibitive favorite. They're the number one seed. They're the number one team in the country. Florida State's a Cinderella team for people who aren't paying attention to this. And they're like, wait a minute, Cinderella team, how are they a Cinderella team? They won the national title three years ago. This team was not supposed to be here. And so they've knocked off the number three team, which everyone believed was the best team in the country, Alabama. They had to beat them back-to-back -back games, which is incredible. They had to beat uh, UCLA. They had to beat uh, Arizona, who has a very good team. And now they're having to go up against uh, Oklahoma, who, uh, look, if they win the title, I'll tell you one thing, they earned it. I'm starting to have my doubts that they're going to pull it off, but look, it's been a hell of a ride. And it's fun when you get something you don't expect as a fan. When, like if this was a juggernaut Florida state team and they were number one, number two in the country, I'd be a little pissed right now that they didn't, you know, knock it out last night. But the fact they're even here gave me something to watch in the middle of June while we're waiting for the NBA and NHL finals to uh, plot along. So, I mean, last night I had a busy night. I had a crappy night, too. I let Florida State lose. Will Smith and his bozo frisbee throw that he likes to drag across the plate gave up a two-run shot walk-off home run for a rookie from the, from the Phillies. I don't even know his damn name, but the moment he came up, Florida State had just lost. And so I'm locked into this game. I'm, I'm sitting there watching it. And I'm, you know, I'm, th I'm always thinking out loud when I'm watching these games. My wife's next to me just scrolling through, you know, uh, Facebook or whatever. She's ignoring me all to hell. So I'm, I'm basically talking to the dog. And uh, the he comes up to bat, this kid. There's two outs. There's one on. He just lost McCutcheon two batters before with the, with the, with the walk, which is just – you don't do that when, when you're supposed to be a closer, supposed to be a shutdown closer. And Will Smith got shut down closer money. And he throws this Frisbee in. It was a slider that didn't slide. Now, Glavin tried to say it was a cutter. That damn thing wasn't a cutter. And I wouldn't argue about what Glavin knows about pitching compared to me. But that was not a cutter. Because you can just look at the plane. It was a slider that didn't slide. And uh, it's basically a Frisbee toss. And he launches it out of the building right before that. I'm like, I, I'm still talking to my dog, essentially. And I was like, don't make him a damn hero. Don't make this rookie a hero. Make him earn it. 
pitch outside the zone. You know damn good and well this kid's going to be overzealous. There's not much of a chance a rookie's going to come off the bench in a pinch hit moment and draw a walk. He's going to be overzealous. He throws a Frisbee in the Susie hit. I was like, that's it. Lights out. Time to go home. So, so he ruined he ruined my Tucker start. Oh, yeah. Tucker Gosh, had dang a hell it. Of a, had a hell of a game. Six innings, no runs or one run or something. This is twice Tucker Davidson's um, start has, has been absolutely foiled. I have him in a couple of leagues myself, and let me make, let me make sure I, I got the right uh, league here. Yeah, here we go. I want to pull up his actual stat line because – he was pitched a phenomenal game. And Tucker Davidson, once again, is 0-0 with a 1.53 ERA, a .96 whip, four, 14 Ks. So he actually had a, a decent stat line last night as, as far as across the board. Um, unbelievable. I mean, unfreaking believable Anyways, um, he had 10 swinging strikes. Anyways, I'm not going to get into all the analytics of it. But anyways, uh, I didn't. Even, I don't even want to drop him now, though. Like I, I like what he's can't. doing. Not to keep harping on it, but oh, you can't. You absolutely can't. If you've got him on your fantasy team, you got to keep him. I've got him in two leagues. He's not going anywhere because they're they're not going to DFA him. Again. I mean, uh, NA him again uh, because the way the schedule sets up. The reason why they did it before there were people chirping all over Twitter about this last night. You can't, you can't, you can't send them back. Down. The reason why they were sending them back down before is because we had like two or three days off in like an eight day span. And there was no reason to have them on the roster. And so the rule states, you have to go down for 10 days. If not, it's going to get counted against one of your, your, uh, 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 options in major league baseball you get three options and so you have to play the play play the numbers game so that's why he was being sent down because they're adding another player to their bullpen because they didn't need him because you had the three horses up there starting and then the fourth random game was being started by smiley which you can't send him back down because if you send him back down you dfa him and although smiley's been garbage they don't want to dfa him so that's why T Tucker Davidson, but Tucker Davidson's there to stay for the foreseeable future. I think eventually, and I look, I said this two weeks ago on Braves country. I, and I'll say it again. Tucker Davidson is going to stay in the lineup. N Enoa, when his hand comes back, is going to go back into the lineup. And then I firmly believe that your boy Smiley is going to go to the bullpen and he's going to be a situational a uh, long reliever because there's it's either that or they go to a six man rotation. You can't you can't bench any of the other guys in the rotation. Period. Because Drew Smiley's just been actual crap. You know he can't get out of the fifth inning, so he's not really a starter. He's an opener who just hangs around for a couple of <laughs> adios, adios, muchacho. All right, let's go ahead and move <laughs> on here. Uh, getting out of the first quarter of the armchair quarterback. So here we go. All right, NBA playoffs. We'll dive into this really quick. Uh, as far as last night, so people know what the hell's going on. The Suns blew out the Nuggets last night. 123-98. Chris Paul, 17 points, points, 15 assists. He was phenomenal. And game was never really that close. At the half, it was about like, I want to say it was like a 10-point lead, something like that. And then they just continued to methodically blow them out uh this series now goes back to denver in a must-win situation for the nuggets i think the problem with denver is they can't get yoke going because they put ayton on him and ayton has been eating his lunch he's been enough because for for denver to win Jokic has to be dominant Jokic has been okay but if he's not dominant, Denver's just simply not going to win. He scored 24 points last night. He had 13 rebounds. But for, for Jokic and the Nuggets to beat the Suns, I think he's got to be scoring in the 30s every night, and I don't think that's going to happen with the defense that they're putting on him. Yeah, and it, it's it's been abysmal. Coach Malone actually called them out after game two. Uh, game one, a couple of players like, you know, Aaron Gordon and uh, Jokic tried to uh, – you know, hype up the team, but 
it didn't work. And Malone said they flat out quit last night, actually. And yeah, like you said, Jokic still had 24. All the starters minus or worse, fully up to minus 26 while on the floor. So they really two horrendous games uh, to start this series. And I know they say a series doesn't start until you lose at home, but my gosh, between Milwaukee and, uh, you know, the Denver Nuggets, I've never seen a bigger game three for either team coming up being in two all holes like they are. It's just, it, it, especially Milwaukee, where my uh, heart desires with Giannis, because I like that he signed there. Um, but the, it, when you get in a 2-0 lead, these games have been ugly. Uh, sadly, this NBA playoff round has been blowout city for the most part. Yeah, they, there hasn't been any great series so far. That, that's that been the biggest disappointment of the NBA series so far. Um, tonight, you got a chance for a bit of a, of an upset, so to speak, or at least get it back into uh, the fold. Uh, the Nets and Bucks, Harden's not going to play again. It's going to be in Milwaukee. They're a three-point favorite. The Nets have blown them out the first two games. If you're ever going to have a pulse, it's tonight with Milwaukee. If they're not going to win tonight, if they're not going to go out there and show and make a statement, then go ahead and just put a fork in the in the Bucks for the next two seasons because Giannis Antetokounmpo, who was the MVP the previous two seasons, he has got to show some damn fight, and he can't just be a stat line guy, right? He can't just go out there, oh, I scored my 28. You're going to have to get your nose dirty. You're going to have to bloody yourself. You're going to have to bang in the paint, and he's got to take this team on his back. He's got to go mano y mano and take it as a personal insult that Kevin Durant has been outperforming him. The points are, are not impressive if you're not getting results. And Andre Kupo cannot just fill the stat line. What say you? No, oh, I mean, I agree completely. It's got to be, you know, they don't even have James Harden right now, which I know they're always been missing a piece. But Blake Griffin, my gosh, if he's been the storyline ahead of any Milwaukee player, you know things are just going wrong. They brought in Drew Holiday. Um, it worked well against Miami, but things have just not been working out. Brooklyn is scoring at will, um, and it, it's just tough. When you're letting Blake Griffin look like him old, it's funny. He didn't dunk with the Detroit Pistons for a whole year and a half, and he hit four or five dunks in this playoff series. So some, something needs to rejuvenize Milwaukee when they're at home. I mean, they just got to be men. They guess you got to, you got to say it with your chest, man. You cannot, you cannot let them go into your building and beat you. Cause if you're, if you're, if you're trying to be serious, and you're trying to be a serious contender, whether you win this series or not, you got to take them to, you got to, you, you got to win the games on your court in this series. Because if Correct. you just fade away and lose four to one or whatever, it's just a, who, who the hell is going to want to come play with you, Honor Kempo? You, you've got to show that you can be the man. Clippers exactly. Jazz tonight. Jazz are up one game to nothing after the incredible performance by Donovan Mitchell and company to come back and beat the Clippers in game one. I believe the Jazz are going to march on and, and win this series, but I don't think it's going to be easy. Uh, game two tonight's at 10 o'clock Eastern. I will not be watching that. I will watch the highlights tomorrow morning because that damn game's starting too damn late for me to stay up for that garbage. Uh, but anyways, um, you give the Clippers a chance. Uh, well, actually, I mean, it leads into my bet. I was going to say for in the series, I do give them a chance. I think this will go seven games, but I think Clippers, was actually steal tonight so i would be all over their money line even though they're getting three points i think the clippers would be a good bet tonight after that tough game one loss where donovan mitchell went off in the second half all right so that takes us to that so you, is that your uh pick against the spread today that that was i would go clipper clipper spread if you don't have you know the coyotes as they would say but i would go a clippers money line so the Clippers right now are a plus 130. Uh, for people to understand what, how that works, uh, basically, if you if you bet $100, you're going to win 130 back. So uh, conversely, yeah. the Jazz, if you bet 150 tonight, you would win 100. So it's interesting to me that the Clippers are a bigger underdog than the Nets because the Nets have looked phenomenal. And uh, – they're still only like a plus 110 to win the championship. 
in the in Vegas. And I see them as the prohibitive favorite. So that's a really, really good bet right now. Now, the only question I have is whether or not Harden, when he's going to come back, if he's not going to come back in the very near future, that could affect it. But assuming Harden's going to come back, I mean, this is ridiculous. Not only are they so good, they're blowing one out. They don't even need everybody, but it's ridiculous that we're at the point now where Harden can't stay healthy. Kyrie, I'm waiting for Kyrie to drop or something. It just seems like Kevin Grant's <laughs> the only one that's gonna that's gonna motor on through. Kyrie will take off for a weekend because you know he's got to get his head clear and you know it's just not basketball. It's not that important to him right now. You know, uh, he's gonna go read poetry down down at the coffee house or something. So I I keep waiting for it to fall apart, but it hasn't fallen apart yet. So my pick of of the day, I'm gonna go to baseball as I normally do because I just. Unless I'm going to go money line like you did, basketball is a sucker bet to me. I do not That's like fair. points. I, I if I think a team's going to win and they're getting points, I'll do that. But correct, I won't. Man, I I'm a firm believer in you. I'm not going to give you up like eight points because a team could be up by twelve and then garbage time, team hit you know hits a three and a and a and a one second to go lay up and you blow the spread because nobody's paying attention. All right. I'm going to have faith in the Braves today. Hey. Plus 122. Okay. On the money line, Ian Anderson is going, I feel like that's a pretty darn good bet. And I'm going to take the Atlanta Braves early start today. One Oh five. I probably just put the kiss of death on them. They're going to begin Zach Wheeler. That's why, but Anderson has had a couple of uh, shaky outings. I expect him to be the Ian Anderson of this past weekend. And I think, uh, I'm sorry, not this past weekend, the start before, and I think he'll pitch pretty well. He, he, he had a disastrous outing against the Dodgers. I believe that he normally does not do, do two batting outings in a row. So I'm, I'm just going to play the, the odds on that. And it's a quick turnaround. Um, we'll see if the Braves got any fight, though, because that, that was a deflator last night. And if that doesn't get Anthopolis on the horn trying to get a damn closer into Atlanta, I don't know who will. And if the stupid Cubs, who we'll talk about in a second, would quit winning, we would have had a chance at Kimbrel, but that ain't happening. All right, so uh, <laughs> we'll be back in a flash from the armchair quarterbacks. When we come back, we're going to talk a little baseball. We're going to get to the National Football League. There is news around the camps, so, so we're going to sit around the campfire and talk about the NFL camps. We'll be back in a flash. You're a cop, huh? No, what I am, Sonny, is about 50 pounds heavier and one hell of a lot meaner, so you better straighten up your act. I don't think I like it. The snapper is Robert Shiver, a sophomore out of Thomasville, Georgia. The holder is Matthew Motley, a senior from Opelika, and Wes Byram, a freshman out of Fort Lauderdale, trying to put it through to give Auburn the win. Here's the snap, the place, the kick is up, the kick is long enough, the kick is good, good, see you later alligator, Tigers win, 20 to 17, I hope Lee Corso and Kirk Street never pick Auburn to have a chance again, being number two, being number four, it all starts with just one thing, glass jars can be reused to store food and spices as a holder for combs and brushes in the bathroom, or as a container for plants and homemade candles, in addition to simply being recycled. Find tips and more at OneThingUS.com. Tom has been a teacher for over 40 years. One day, I think one of the students had asked the question and he didn't remember the answer. And I also noticed that he was letting his class out earlier than they were supposed to let out. I was really starting to worry. Levi and I talked about how it would change our lives, but he was there beside me. When something feels different, it could be Alzheimer's. Now is the time to talk. Visit alz.org slash our stories to learn more. A message from the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. If we actually enjoyed our New Year's resolutions, we'd all have six packs, money in our saving accounts, and we'd know how to play the piano. I have to tell you about the one resolution I actually enjoy. It's Built Bar. It's delicious. Oh, yeah, it's healthy, too. Built Bar is healthier than your favorite protein bar. They're low-cal, low-sugar, high-protein, high-fiber, great for the keto diet. Lose or maintain weight while indulging. And with only four net carbs and 150 calories, there's no guilt. Visit BuiltBar.com. Make contact. 
A collective psychosis is sweeping the nation. We're in the thick of the haze craze, and Elysian is introducing an altered state of IPA. Contact Haze is a tangled chemistry of mild haze, low bitterness, and an explosion of hop aroma. This hazy IPA bursts with notes of bright raspberry, currant, citrus, guava, and passion fruit. Available in six-pack cans in stores and in all Seattle Elysian locations. Make contact. You're listening to CBS Sports Radio. We are all sports 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Strong opinions and your phone calls. Expect it here. CBS Sports Radio. I'm Amy Lawrence, and I'm up late, always, after hours, hanging out with you on CBS Sports Radio. Check it out, 2 a.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. This is Principal O'Shaughnessy. Students, please report to the gymnasium for your club photos. Fake announcement. Are you listening? Good morning. Welcome back here, CBS Sports Radio, YouTube Live. And uh, quick programming note, Saturday mornings, 11 a.m. Eastern, Joey and Christian bring you the neighborhood play here on the Armchair Quarterbacks show. So you just go to YouTube Live and away we go. That that same morning, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern, we do the payoff pitch, and that's Sean and Steven. That's, so the neighborhood play is Chicago baseball. The the payoff pitch is analytical fantasy baseball. And so uh, we've been doing that and um, having a lot of fun with that. Uh, some good responses. And we're also doing, obviously, Braves Country Today comes your way every single day at the top of the next hour. And started doing uh, Take Me Out to the Ball Game today. Uh, then that basically, I'm just trying to condense about a couple of stories to get you going in your in your sports day to kind of something that, that you check out on the can or when you're eating lunch, like, like about five minutes or so usually drags a little later than that. I'm trying to get it to a <laughs> crisp, crisp five minutes, but I always end up like just blathering on. So I'm trying to cut that to five minutes, but basically just go over the type of things that basically, if you don't have time to, to listen to a sports show, you don't have time to keep up with the world of sports. I try to hit the bullet points is basically what the, uh, uh, deal is with that, but take me out to the ball game today as well. And then I feel like I'm forgetting. Oh yeah. Uh, Tony's a uh, Gators and golf on, uh, tomorrow morning, 8 AM Eastern. We do that live where I can't wait to hear. I can't wait to give Tony a hard time about the Gators. Oh no, don't do but, it. Don't. You have but to. <laughs> he's probably going to have ammunition on me because Florida state's probably going to lose today. And so he'll be just like, Oh, okay, what about your softball team? Um, the biggest thing I want to get, get his opinion on though, tomorrow morning is there are some big names that are not going to be in the U S open this year that missed the cut for the qualifying. We'll talk about that tomorrow, but I I'm very interested to get his take on that. Tony's a huge golf guy and uh, he's, he's like an encyclopedia when it comes to the university of Florida and golf. It's like, it's like, <laughs> it's like the way I, I think most people probably think I am on like Braves and other sports but it always amazes me when I run into someone just like me. I was just like, damn, dude, like you need a life. Man, quit watching so much sports. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, yeah, like six games on at all times. It's ridiculous. I get this when I have to go to a sports bar and I have less options to watch. Like, God, can we just go home? Well, like, it's a, it, like, like there's nothing on TV. It's the worst when they don't know how to control the TV remote. Like the bartender, wow. like they don't, they don't even do. know how to do the TV situation. Yeah. That's the most. The, li it, it, uh, the last time that I was a front of the house manager at a restaurant here in Jacksonville, I actually used a phone holster. You, you know, like the, like the cell phone phone holster. I used that for a remote. Because we had TVs and on TVs on TVs that I kept adding in, into the restaurant. And there was one that was kind of like the mothership. It, 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 it controlled all of them. And someone always wanted to know if they could get this game or that game or that game or this game. And I even went out of my way and I would do the thing where you put the signs underneath. Oh, nice. I like that. Yeah. But sometimes there, there would be a situation where you still have to try to change the channel. Uh, 
during like a regular, like a Wednesday, someone just randomly came in to watch like the Rockies or something. You're not expecting that. And so I always had that on. Everyone always laughed. They're like, why is your phone out of your phone holster? I was like, because I don't use my phone as much as I use this remote. Like, it's just, it just isn't a thing. It's like, I'm constantly going, no, no, no. You're like, bam, there you go. There's the game. <laughs> Star Wars style. <laughs> NFL Network, NBA Network, and, F- and uh, MLB. There you go. All right, let's go. Um, now I go to that damn place. Oh my God. Half the TVs are off. If they're on, they're on like the, the QVS channel. I mean, it's a dumpster fire. Oh, I don't really even go in there time. anymore. And I've got friends that still work there. And I'm like, I don't want to go in there. Cause it's miserable. Like you got to go in, you go, can you get this on? And there are, uh, 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 you know, they, 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 it's like you said, they can't figure out how to work a remote. And I normally have to go, just give me the damn thing. I, well, you don't know how to work it. Yes, I do. Boom, 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 boom. But I'm like, I don't, I don't want to. That's the biggest one. I'm like, I don't want to clock in. Like, you, you figure it out. <laughs> and I hate God, the ghost when you walk it. into a sports bar. A sports bar, not if you walk into like an Italian restaurant. Okay, I'm talking about a sports bar. Sports and the, bar, yeah. And you sit down. Let's say you and I are going to have have a couple of beers, lunch or whatever, and and the server asks you. You know, hey, how you doing? What can I get for you today? And if one of our first responses is, can we get the Cubs game on? They're playing San Diego this afternoon, right? That should be your damn mission, okay? Not worrying about if I have lemon in my water. Because then they'll bring it back. They'll take your order. Then they'll bring it back in your, like, everything okay? Yeah, but you still haven't put the game on. And we've been here 25 minutes. Like, what the hell are you doing? Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Like, we came here. Because you're a sports bar to watch sports, and you've got like reruns of of uh, Oprah Winfrey on in the background, right? And I'm like, what the hell am I doing? Oh, hold on, let let, let me get my manager uh, and try to take care of this for you. Let me get my manager <laughs> out. That, that dork comes out, and you know, the, the, these you have to find one guy who knows sports in the back. And you're like, I'm like, what are you on direct TV? <laughs> yeah, all right, ESPN two is two oh nine. Just go. Oh, how'd you know that? Cause I had, I, cause I, cause I did this for a while, you know, anyways. Um, yeah, there's just give me the remote. Just give us it the just, it always dumbfounds <laughs> me when you go to a sports bar and the sports are not on that should be on. Right. If I'm a Seattle Mariners fan and I'm in Jacksonville, Florida, and I it's go terrible. in and the Mariners are not on, I have to kind of expect that. And I'm going to have to fight to get it on. But if I'm a Miami hurricane fan and I walk into Jacksonville, Correct. into a Jacksonville bar and the Hurricanes are playing a football game. I shouldn't have to go looking for it. It should be on in front of me. Anyways, end rant. Uh, Major League Baseball, I think the biggest thing <laughs> before we hit the Cubs, dude, how about Garrett Cole going out there and shutting up Josh Donaldson last night with all his sticky-tack this and sticky-tack that? He went and struck out Josh Donaldson twice last night. And <laughs> Garrett Cole... I want to get his get his line up real quick because I want to make sure I've got it right. I believe he had. I know he got the W and he had. Let me see the, the stat line. He had no. Okay, I thought it was ten. He had nine strikeouts, six innings, two earned runs. He did give up a couple of home runs, but he he struck out Donaldson twice, and that's the best way to shut Donaldson up. over five. <laughs> yeah, that's the best way to shut shut people up like Donaldson just go out there and strike his ass out because they asked him after the game if, if the beef was over and he said no he goes if he wants to reach out to me uh that's fine but i'm, I'm not going to keep harping on it that's basically saying if he wants to grovel and apologize <laughs> he knows how to get to my people but if not <laughs> i'm worried about october because josh donaldson is not going to be there him and his Minnesota Twins are going to be sitting in the cellar where they've been sitting all year long. Uh, the Cubs, man, break up the Cubs. What the hell are they doing? They're going out there and kicking uh, San Diego's ass out there in, in uh, San Diego. What's going on? Well, I mean, well it's funny, San Diego too, because, you know, we talked on the neighborhood. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, well no, no, we even mentioned it on the neighborhood play about this 14-game tumultuous stretch they had coming up. Started with the Giants, and we were 0-3 to start that. I'm like, oh, boy, is this the real, you know, 
is this the team that's coming out? But then they took the last one, then went to San Diego, picked up the cup last couple of games, only allowing two runs and scoring 10. I did not mind it at all. And now here we come back home against St. Louis with a full capacity crowd uh, tomorrow on Friday at 120. So I'm really looking forward to this series. Uh, it, we're a half game up in the division. It's going to be a fun one. And uh, the Cubs, whew, they're on fire again. That is going to be fun. Uh, I did not know that they were doing the day game tomorrow. So that, I always like the Cubs day games. There's so much fun because it gives you something to, to keep up with on, as you kick off your weekend. Right. And it's on ESPN plus as well. Even when I'm, uh, well, I've got the MLB package, so I don't worry about it. I know you do. I was letting, you know, the general people. <laughs> get with the program. Sorry, you oh, cut the cord <laughs> table and get your baseball package. You spend less money and you get more content. Um, tomorrow, by the way, it's going to be Hendricks versus uh, Oviedo. That's going to be interesting because Hendricks has been pitching well. Oviedo, man, he's, uh, let's just call that what it is. That's going to be a bullpen game. Um yeah. They're going to try to get the most Correct. they can out of them. And then John Gant goes Saturday. I don't have a team. I don't, I don't have a pitcher for, for Saturday for the Cubs yet. So this is undecided. And then Sunday, is, is that the Sunday night baseball game of the, of the week? Uh, yes. Uh, Carlos. Yep. And then Saturday, they're actually on Fox too. Okay. Uh, Carlos Martinez versus Zach Davies. So uh, I'd be shocked. I, I don't have a way to check it right now because it's too early in the day, but I'd be shocked if that Cubs Cardinals game isn't on MLB network as well. So um, they usually run. If, if the Cubs play daytime on Fridays, MLB network shoot usually has it on there, but Martinez versus Davies. I say advantage Cubs. We don't know what the matchup is going to be on Saturday. It's Gantt. And then uh, Friday, I say advantage Cubs. Um, as far as pitching matchups go, I, I think the Cardinals are, are in trouble because Oviedo, because you're going to miss, uh, Wainwright and you're going to miss obviously Flaherty. Who's on the DL IL. Um, that should be a good series for the Cubs. See, see, see Gant, don't let Gant's numbers fool you. If you pull up Gant, uh, you see a two, six, three ERA. It was even much lower after his last outing. Yeah, he got shelled for seven against Cincy. Right, but when you have a really low ERA but a very high whip, something's going to give eventually. The dam is going to break. You can't be ha you can't have so many guys on base to your own doing every inning and continue to have a low ERA. Eventually, you <laughs> eventually you're going to screw the pooch, and that's what he did on uh, last time out. Uh, okay, let's move to the National Football League here on the Armchair Quarterbacks because uh, we got we got the camps going on right now, and uh, let's get some football sounding stuff. I should be doing this more often, but I always forget about it. Stupid intern never shows up. Um, so here we go, the National Football League. Aaron Rodgers, you kind of prefaced it. <laughs> He's not coming. So quit talking about it, ESPN. He's not going to come. Now, what I found the funniest, what I found the funniest was the, uh, well, first of all, the 49ers canceled their mandatory mini camp, but I think that's because they're in the hell that is California. Okay. And so governor, I don't, what the hell is his name? Uh, anyways, the guy that's about to get, get the ax out there, has got the it still has the 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 protocols going on so to such a rate that I think the 49ers said, you know, screw this. Let's just freaking meet up in July and call it a day, right? But Texas is wide open. Texas is 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 like mini Florida. Because Florida's been wide open the whole damn time, essentially, but Texas has been pretty close to them. Texas, there's not a reason why you wouldn't have a mini camp except you don't want to be put in the predicament of having to fine Deshaun Watson because he's not planning on coming to it. So they, I mean, if there's ever tanking, this is it, Joey. Your team's going to be terrible and you don't feel like you need to practice. I, 
It's uh That'd be like telling man. me, hey, McGee, Super Bowl, you're gonna sing the national anthem. And I go, I don't need to practice. I'll be fine. <laughs> For those of y'all don't know, I can't, it's like, I, I, got I can't it. sing worth the damn. So the point is, if someone told me I had to go sing in front of people, the first thing I'd do is just go try to fight a freaking, uh, you know, voice coach or something. Go, please, I know you can't pull off miracles, but let me not look terrible. And that's essentially what the what the Texans are doing. They're going to be awful, and they're not going to practice either. It, man, I mean, the AFC South is slowly becoming, I'm not going to say one of the best, but one of the most interesting divisions in football between Watson, Jacksonville and their new start, Indy with the new quarterback coming to town. And obviously now with the Titans getting Julio, the AFC South is just a, a lot of storylines going on there. I know we were talking about Aaron Rodgers, but what uh, each team has something going on there. And these voluntary workouts, teams are doing their own things. I don't know how really much to say about it, but uh, yeah. Rogers ain't there and just let us know ESPN when something actually happens. Don't talk. What I believe is happening. Talk about it. Every day. The Packers are seeing what they have in Jordan love. And if LaFleur and company think that they can make it work. Bye Rogers. Trade them. If, he, if he's in camp this week and they're like, dude, this guy's still like a rookie. This is not going to work. Then th then they're going to try to uh, appease Aaron Rodgers and see if they can, can talk him into staying. So as of right now, he has no intentions of staying. None. But I can see them holding. No, I mean, it, it's similar similar situation to when Favre and Rodgers were going at it, and then they, they saw what Rodgers had. And now if Jordan Love keeps playing well, I mean, the Packers aren't just going to sit there and do nothing. Eventually something's got to give, right? Yeah, but the problem is we just don't know what Jordan Love is because as far as far that as, true. as, as, far true. as anything is concerned, he's a, he's essentially Trey Lance. He's a, he's a, he's a questionable, uh, what the hell happened to Abreu? Did you see this last night? Yeah. The, um, Pyre with the bat. Yeah, he collapsed behind it. What did he do? Did he get hit by a bat? He got hit by a bat that an umpire was like kind of, you know, Chucking pushing up. off to the side. Gotcha. Okay. I, I saw the tail end of it. It looked like he went down from like a gunshot or something. Like, what the hell happened to a break? <laughs> like, did you see him hold his, grab his knee and fall down? I was like, oh. <laughs> so is this along the lines of, I don't know. It was remember. funny. My buddy made a fantasy trade. What? My buddy uh, made a fantasy trade for Jose Abreu yesterday. We were giving him crap because he went down literally within five minutes of that trade going through. And we're like, dude, it looks like he might be carted off his season's done. But I think this is a minor injury that I, just, I don't think. Well, he went back up to bat. So, I mean, I guess he's okay. But uh, I can check real quick because I do have him in one league. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I mean, he must be okay because he's because he, I mean, if it was that serious, you wouldn't see him going back up there. Well, well, but what I was thinking of, do you remember the? I don't remember his name, but do you remember the offensive lineman? Um, God, it's probably been close to a decade ago. Where the ref threw the through the 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 uh, the flag, and of course those those uh, NFL flags, they got like little beanies to weight them down so they hit the ground. And it hit the dude in the freaking eye socket, and he, he sued the the NFL. You were, oh yeah. Does that ring a bell to you? Obviously not. Um. Anyways, uh, that's the first thing I thought of when, when I do remember that. I forget the player. Yes, it does. Yeah, it was the Cleveland Browns. I'm pretty sure. Um. But yeah, the. Uh, Let's see, it doesn't look like he's so there's no injury update on him, so it looks like he's okay. And they play tonight again at 8 10, and he, he doesn't have a day to day or anything on. He did go over four, so yeah, that's not helping things, but uh, anyways, um, moving on from that in the, in the NFL camp, Dak's a full go, 
Trevor Lawrence. It should be back today. He has like a mild hamstring strain that they were keeping him out of practice yesterday. And then Brady's back after his injury situation. Um, of all those stories, what's jumping out at you other than the fact that Julio Jones has just sealed the deal to the Tennessee Titans of the 2021 AFC champions. All right, man. I, I think you're freezing up or something. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, uh, and, and you're muted now. I don't know what the hell you're doing. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, uh, do our uh, walk-offs and turn back time. Uh, hopefully you'll get, get it together by then. Here we go. Uh, all right. On this date, in 1902, Horace Fogel, also known as, well, he, he, he was known for his uh, career as a sports writer, is fired as the manager of the Giants just 44 games into the season. Now, this is in 1902. What the hell is a sports writer doing managing a team? Well, it was 1902, and they were just throwing, throwing ideas up at the wall. This is the guy that preceded... Uh, oh, what the hell is his name? Uh, McGraw, John McGraw. But anyways, this guy became famous or infamous in New York. It kind of ruined his writing career because he tried to turn Christy Mathewson into an everyday position player. He was a sophomore pitcher who had won 20 games his rookie year, and, and this knucklehead was trying to turn him into an everyday position player. So they fired his ass. They they brought in uh, McGraw and the rest is history. Also on this date in 2007, 14 years ago, Rafael Nadal wins the French Open title for the third consecutive year, beating Roger Federer. And in 2012, on this date, Maria Sharapova wins her first French title, beats uh, Sarah Anon or Irani, which I don't remember her. Uh, six three six two. Man, Maria Sharapova, she fell off a cliff. Like she was one of the best players. Then I think she said, "I don't need to do this. I'm going to go model." And so uh, that don't was, blame her. <laughs> no, I, I don't either. But it, it's just kind of a shame because because she was a good player. I enjoyed I watching her. She always seemed like she was a class act, and uh, she kind of it was like out of nowhere. She just eh, what the hell with this. I'm not doing this anymore. She wasn't like the other girl. What was her name? Uh, it's Anna Kornikova. Yep. That was more of a sex symbol than she was a tennis star, right? Like she was a decent player, but she wasn't a champion. Sharapova was a champion. Uh, okay, birthdays. Whoops, here we go. It's your birthday today. 70 years young. Mr. Dan Fouts. Happy birthday. Uh, of course, he played for the Chargers from 73 to 87. He was the NFL MVP in 82, NFL Offensive Player of the Year in 82, two-time All-Pro in 79 and 82, and a six-time Pro Bowler. One of the more underrated players, I believe, in the history of the NFL. Um, Is he, is he really not in the NFL Hall of Fame? He's in the Chargers Hall of Fame. I don't know what. Okay, you, never mind. Yes, he is. Okay, I was about to say, why the hell isn't he in the Hall of Fame? He was a great. He's a great announcer too for CBS. Yeah, yeah, he saw. But he but he was one of my favorite players growing up. There was only a few times that it happened, but him, Dan Fouts versus Dan Marino when I was a kid was must see TV because it was just lightning bolts going through the air it was incredible incredible uh football also happy birthday today is pokey reese he's 48 years old oh pokey reese yeah um lifetime 248 hitter had uh only 44 home runs and he wasn't really a home run hitter but he, he played for the the reds from 97 to 01 and then uh, continued his uh, career with the pirates and the red Sox until 2004 and in may of 2015 Reese was named the high school baseball coach at his alma mater, Lower Richland High School in uh, Hopkins, South Carolina, and I believe he's still there. 
So uh, there you have there. And he's had three kids. Uh, unfortunately, he lost his wife to uh, childbirth through childbirth. Uh, I, uh. Believe, I believe during the second child. So that's a, it's a terrible thing, but happy birthday to Pokey Reese and Dan Fouts. What is your walk off for the day, sir? My walk off for today is roommate. Stop watching porn. I'm trying to do my damn show and you're getting in the way with the Wi-Fi. So I apologize. I apologize to all the fans out there. My roommates are loading up the computer screen. It's ugly. I really am, do apologize. It's we'll be one better. Hour. One hour. Give me my time. Get off the thing, and I'll see y'all Saturday on the Neighborhood Play. Keep your pants on for one more hour. That's all we ask. It's too early for that crap. <laughs> I was surprised because uh, the last time you were on, I don't remember what show it was, but you had a, you, you were in a different setting, and you had a Cubs picture behind you. Um, was that was that a hotel or something? It, it, that's where I was uh, residing in St. Louis, yes. Oh, Wait a minute, you had a Cubs picture behind you in St. Louis? I brought it with me, baby. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. For okay. the show, for the show. That's the best backdrop you've had, man. Maybe it's time for you to move to St. Louis. Oh, my God. Damn, I'm getting burnt like toast today. <laughs> All right, we will see you Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern on the Neighborhood Play. Look forward to it. Uh, just remember, y'all, uh, Braves today or Braves country today is coming up here in a little bit. And then of course we will be releasing the, uh, take me out to the ball game today. I've got a couple of good topics. You don't want to miss that. It's basically stuff. I, I can't get, get to on, on this show as well. So, good luck uh, state. Oh yeah. And that's, and that's basically my walk off. Let's go Knowles. Uh, one last time, if nothing else, leave it all on the field. Your five girls that are on the team. Now we're on the team in 18, so it would be pretty special if they if they came back for one last year because remember they lost last year because of COVID. There was no championship, and they were playing really good softball last year. It would be cool if the five girls that actually stayed and ended up winning a championship. All right, brothers, see you uh, Saturday. Have a good one. Goodbye, sweetheart. Goodbye. Goodbye. Guys and gals, it's time to go. We'll see you on the next show. Same back time, same back channel. Thanks for listening to the Armchair Quarterbacks on these CBS Sports affiliates and catching the show on YouTube Live. We're here weekdays. Find Armchair Quarterbacks on YouTube Live today. Please subscribe and share and take us everywhere you go. The Armchair Quarterbacks, your first choice for Southern Sports Talk, live from the First Coast. Can I get another cigarette, please? Can I get another cigarette, please? Yeah, I know.